Professionals, don't cuss me like that. <laughs> She's a big one. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Acres Scuba and Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. Well, you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. Now, if you can't tell here behind me, we got another boat salvage. Um, pretty simple salvage actually. What we're actually doing is just lifting the boat up and gonna pump it out. Um, we we're actually here at the PDRA. This is the Salisbury Quarry, or otherwise known as the American Quarry which is owned and operated by the Piedmont Diving and Rescue Association. Uh, it's a big quarry membership here in the state of North Carolina. When you become a member, you actually get three quarries for the price of one, and it's a full year membership here. Uh, you get 24 seven access, you get a card and a key, come anytime you want and dive. Well, this actual vessel here is gonna go out here in what we call the pit, which is out here in the deepest part. And they're gonna get it sunk and put into place, but it's not completely prepped and ready to do. There's still some uh, trash and debris and stuff in the vessel that's got to come out before um, before they can sink it. Well, unfortunately, because of the cold snap and stuff, the pumps, the village pumps have froze up on this vessel. And so we've got to actually get it up to get that water out so that we can get in and get all that debris out. So that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to kind of jump in real quick and uh, put a couple bags on this thing, lift it up, pump it out, and that way they can get on it, get the rest of the trash and stuff out, and then on a different day, they'll take it out and sink it. Let's jump on this thing real quick and see how quick it takes us to get it up. All right, guys, so this is gonna be a relatively short commentary over this. Uh, in short, I've got two of our dive professionals. This is one of our dive masters here, Michael Moretz. He is starting to get into the salvage work with us. His father is also with us on this dive, who is one of our assistant instructor trainers. Uh, he's one of the instructors here that uh, helps me teach new instructors. And he too is also getting into the salvage side of things. So we thought, what what better than a, a short little salvage like this to, to get them started? And I can kind of walk, walk them through and you know show them the ropes of everything that we do. Just like on any salvage, first thing we're going to do, of course, is a just a quick inspection of the vessel and this is what me and uh, dive master michael's doing we're just swimming around doing a quick inspection uh, just to see what attachment points we may have to see the condition of the vessel and the condition of the hull uh, one of the first things that you'll notice here really quick is there's not a plug so there's no plug there in the um in the stern of the vessel uh, so that's a point that we're going to have to take into consideration that's going to constantly be taken on water as we try to pump it out um, but we're going to go ahead and finish the inspection swim all the way around you also notice that the uh, port side of the vessel is stuck up against the wall here so we are going to have some restricted areas but the good news is we can get under this vessel to put a belly band which is exactly what we're going to do on this vessel we're going to take a belly band we're going to run it completely under it strap two bags and there you you saw real quick i was showing him that that could be used as an attachment point that stern eye there if we needed it but this vessel is not completely submerged um, so we're going to be able to go up underneath it with a belly band and of course uh, put two bags on it secure them off and strap them up to the top and it should be a relatively quick and easy lift for us now that we've done our inspection, we're going to go ahead and get started with uh, the actual rigging part. And we're just taking one of our belly bands here. I'm going to swim it down and underneath the vessel and over to Dive Master Michael and let him kind of hold the strap in place for me. We've already got on the other end of the belly band strap a ratchet strap, which will throw over the top of the vessel. And that's what's going to help secure that belly band in place. Now, if you don't have a ratchet strap to go over the top, you can very easily just secure uh, each part of the belly band, just each end of the belly band there with a little bit of rope you can tie it off to an anchor cleat or anything the whole point of it is is to prevent it from moving we don't want it shifting once we have the bags on it and we're lifting the bags 
But here I'm swimming up underneath the vessel. I'm making sure that I get the belly band positioned exactly where I need it. And all those individual loops, that's what we're actually going to be attaching our lift bags to. It's very important that we get them positioned exactly where we need it. Now, thankfully, the length of our belly band here and the width of this vessel are virtually identical. So the cool thing is that's going to allow us to get all the bags exactly underneath the boat right where we need them to be. They're not going to come up on the side of the gunnels like they uh, typically do in some of our videos. But now that we got the belly band in place, we're going to go ahead and secure the ratchet strap. But once again, the whole sole purpose of this is to uh, secure that belly band in place so it doesn't move, doesn't go anywhere. Um, one thing that you've got to be concerned with here is the proper placement of that. We are going directly over the engine bay. Now the engine is no longer in this vessel because this vessel was being, being set up to sink um, as a dive site. But typically we would still go over the engine bay area because that's going to be the heaviest part of the vessel. And so that's why we chose to put the straps and the bands where they're at now. But now that that's secure, it's time to hook up two bags. And I'm only going to show you one of the bags being hooked up because you've guys, you've seen this in plenty of our videos. We use SubSalve. We're huge, huge fans of SubSalve. Uh, no, we're not sponsored. We, we purchase these out of our pocket, or the company does. Um, but SubSalve makes some of the best lift bags out there. Um, they're 100% U.S. American made. The, the warranty is like no other. It's amazing. If something tears up, they replace it, no questions asked. So I really, really want to give a shout out to SubSalve. Once again, guys, they don't sponsor us. We have to pay out of pocket for this stuff. But I'm going to go ahead and pull the bag under as I'm doing that. Uh, Dive Master Michael and Instructor Trainer Jason there, they are dumping the air so I can pull it under. Once I get it into position, I'm going to go ahead and um, remove my little bolt here. And I'm going to attach it to one of the loops on the belly band. And like I said, it's very important that you get your bags placed exactly where you need them. And a little bit of extra work here in the very beginning makes your job a whole lot easier at the end of the day when you're trying to do a lift. If you take your time and set up everything exactly the way it should be, it's gonna make your job a whole lot easier. Once we got both bands or both bags attached to the belly band, then of course we're gonna secure the bags on top. And all we do there is just tie a little bit of rope or string or something just to kind of hold them in place. And you can use any attachment point. We typically we'll use a cleat, whether it's a stern cleat, bow cleat, something like that. Or in this case, we're just using the bars, the gunnel rails that go all the way around the vessel. Um, but once we got that, then of course it's just hooking up the lines and lifting the vessel up and going ahead and throwing the pumps in and starting to pump. So as I come up here, um, I'll kind of explain how uh, the placement of the bags are so important. All right, guys, I'm going to show you something really quick. Anytime we do a salvage like this, I don't know if you can see it on camera. I'll try to zoom in for you here. But what you actually want to do is get your bags completely up under this vessel. I know in a lot of our salvage videos, seen us hook the bags on the side and sometimes we're limited that's all we can do but i'm going to zoom in here and show you exactly how close these bags are up underneath the vessel itself these are like the perfect position you can place bags when you do a salvage like this so i don't know if you guys can hear me but you can see how that bag is perfectly flat all the way up underneath the hole of the vessel and there's another bag on the opposite side in the exact same position and that's like the perfect position so no matter how much air we put in these bags, that vessel is going to come up perfectly uh, horizontal the way it needs to be, and these bags will not come out of the water. Anytime you do salvage like this, when the bags come out of the water, you actually lose lift. So by positioning the bags exactly where we've got them, it's kind of the perfect position that we could have put these. show you another little technique we use a lot we did this in our video where we were on deep water salvage that's a trash bag those portholes right there those are trash bags with foam put in it and then over here on the other side it's the exact same situation we've got some windows that are open that instructor jason there he's actually holding those bags up against the window creating differential pressure as the pumps are pulling the water out and what that does is gives us a good seal so that as more and more water comes out, that vessel just slowly starts to come up. And we can tr control the trim of the vessel with our compressor unit. We want the stern to come up more, we put a little bit more air in, or we can let some air out in lines to help teeter-tot that boat in this position here. But we want to be careful 
that our pump line does not get pulled out of the water. We also want to be careful because as the bow starts coming up, these bags are slowly, that we've got sealing, these bags are going to slowly start to come off. And if they come off too soon, then water rushes back in those open windows, and then we start right back at square one trying to get this boat up. So it's kind of a long, tedious process. Lifting boats is very easy, and it's a fast process as long as the boat's submerged. Once it gets to the surface, though, it does take a while to get it up because you want to make sure that you're doing everything evenly on the way up and that boat's not shifting back and forth. Alright guys, as you can see the vessel is floating now. Now we do still have two 2,000 pound bags on the back, so there's still 4,000 pounds of lift. However, there is enough water out of this vessel for it to actually float on its own. So you can, there you can kind of see one of the bags sticking out. If we were to let the air out of the bags now, the stern would drop down, but we've got enough of the vessel out of the water, it's displacing enough water it can float. The reason we're going to leave those bags on is because our pump is running all the way down into the bow of the vessel. So we want to keep those bags lifting that stern up, pushing all that water towards the bow so that that pump can actually do its job very efficiently and pump the water out. Don't know if you can see inside the windows there, there's still quite a bit of water. Uh, not enough to actually sink the vessel yet again, but enough to give us trouble. So we're going to sit here and continue to pump. Probably another 10, 15 minutes, we'll have enough water out where we can start disconnecting the bags in the back taking our strap system off and then uh, our quarry manager, Mr. Devin up there in the orange, he'll put a different type of pump system in here to where he can keep the water pumped out of it until he's ready to sink it. Like I said, this vessel is going right over here in the pit. It's about where the pontoon is. It's going to go right over there in the pit. It's going to be sunk as a dive attraction. All right, guys, as you can see, bags are taking off of it and she's floating on her own. Um, we do got an issue in the back where the stern's got a hole in it, plugs missing. I think it broke off whenever it went down in the water, but other than that, boat's floating, job done. So hopefully they can get it cleaned out, they get it sunk here before too much longer, in the exact position that they need, everything will be good to go. Well, guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, big thumbs up, definitely share it for me. If you got any questions, drop me a comment down below. I'll try to answer your questions the best I can. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. Take care, God bless. I'll see you in the next video.